Hi, welcome to the first part on our mini-series on spiritual disciplines. Let me start by reading to you a passage from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the future life to come. Now, how many of us maybe have set New Year's resolutions or have decided now it's time to get fit? And we are so good at starting off on the right path and saying, I'm going to start running three times a week or I'm going to watch what I eat more or I'm going to make sure I get to bed on time and wake up on time. It's so important to have physical discipline. Absolutely. And studies show that exercise in particular releases endorphins and chemicals which um, help us stay happy and buoyant and not get sucked down into sadness or even depression. And it's so important to look after our bodies and be fit and healthy. But sometimes it's so hard to continue on that path of physical discipline. Willpower alone does not get us through. We need a good support network around us. Sometimes we can be a bit all or nothing and say, well, if I don't complete my 10K every time I go for a run, then I've failed. Well, if I can't do it, then I can't do it, and we just stop. There has to be something that's consistent, that fits in with what we're able to do. And for each of us, that will look different, and you'll have to learn what works for you. And as we've just read in the book of Timothy, physical discipline is of some value, absolutely. Absolutely. And in my experience, physical discipline and spiritual discipline are a little bit like this. They go hand in hand. I find that if I'm disciplined with my uh, sleeping times and my exercise times, then my prayer times and reading scripture times are also more consistent. And vice versa. If I've not gotten up to read my Bible in the morning, I'm going to find it harder to decide to go for a run later that day. And maybe you feel a bit like that. And Timothy also tells us that spiritual discipline, well, in fact, it says, godliness is of every value. How do we become godly? Well, spiritual disciplines is a key part of godliness. Over the centuries, there have been many different types of um, monks and churches and sets of people that have sought to seek godly lives, to almost isolate themselves with the sole purpose of pursuing relationship with God. And that's something that we can really learn from, the commitment, the discipline to pursuing godliness, becoming more Christ-like. And that's why spiritual disciplines are so important. You see, Timothy says that it's not just valuable for now, but for the life to come. It gives us a hope. You see, we live in a world where we're so set by getting results now. We want things now. We want it sorted now. I want to get down two trouser sizes in a certain amount of time, or whatever it is. But you see, we need to have that long-term perspective, that long-term vision. And that's why discipline is so hard. So how often have we felt that our prayers aren't answered? How often have we felt that reading scripture just seems to go in one ear and out the other? You see, it takes time. It's a slow process of filling ourselves and that's why spiritual disciplines are so important. Next week, we're going to start by looking at prayer, which is a vital part of our spiritual discipline, learning how to pray well. But for now, these are the things to remember. Our physical discipline and spiritual discipline are very much linked together. Secondly, willpower alone will not get us through this. We need to be accountable and do, do it together with other people and have fellowship. If you need help with that, do get in touch with us. And finally, we need to have a long-term perspective. Not just about how great am I going to feel today, how good is it going to be this week, but in the long term, how is this going to affect me positively? And those are the three starting blocks for effective spiritual discipline. See you next week.